What's up guys? Welcome to another video today. We're going to be talking about CSS utility classes, what they are, how you can use them, and why they're they're important to use, okay? So, um so a CSS utility class is a class that you can make for your styles of your whatever website you're building. And then that way you can just make the styles once and then just put the class name on an element and use it again and again throughout your web page without having to repeat yourself and write the same code over and over. So this is like one of those things that I took a while to grasp until I got into actually building projects and then realizing I was wasting a lot of time writing the same code over and over. So this is kind of more of like an intermediate or advanced concept, but if you learn this faster than I did, it'll end up saving you a lot of time. So what I have in front of you here is like a, this is a web design. Uh, this is in Figma. This is like a professional web design for a multi-page website. And there's like a home, there's an about, there's a pricing page, there's all kinds of pages for this uh, website. We're not going to build the website, but I'm just going to show you uh, why, this is going to show you like why utility classes are so important. So I'm just going to zoom in here. This is the first page of this design. And this is the home page, okay? I can already see on this page that... Uh, all my links have a certain off blue color, so I might want to make one utility class just for the color of the links. We can see that there's multiple buttons or call to actions as they're uh, sometimes called. People call this a call to action. Buttons on this web page that are uh, they're all styled with the exact same styling. So that's another utility class. We can make one CSS class to put on a button when we need it so that the button will look and behave exactly like that because it's the same. And then I also see paragraphs and headings that have the same kind of uh, color of font and the same font weight. So that could be another utility class. So I can already see three or four classes here that I, that I would make before I even started coding this whole project. That would make this project go a lot faster because once I got to those uh, parts of the web page, I would just have to add a CSS class and I wouldn't have to write a bunch of uh, additional CSS every time that I had to make that, right? So, um, and that's just the home page, guys. There's, there's a, there's about pages. There's pricing pages. There's all kinds of pages with the same kind of elements. So, that's one thing that I do before I start a big project like this would be if I was making this from scratch with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Before I started making this whole project, I would first look. Okay, what can I do right off the bat? Um, along with getting my images and everything, what kind of like styles and maybe even if I was adding JavaScript, like what kind of little JavaScript can I add um, as like a utility ahead of time so that it would be ready to go when I started to code and it would make it go faster. So that's what utility classes are. That's why we should use them. Now we're going to go in and I'm going to jump in and we're going to write some code out. We'll make like a little page. It's not going to look like this, but well, we'll make a page and I'll just show you utility classes in action so that you get a better understanding. I'll give you a little like practical example since after all this is the practical web dev channel, right? So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. I recommend that you do the same. Open up a text editor of Visual Studio Code and code along with me here. And let's just make a new, uh, I'm just going to make a new folder in my desktop and call it CSS Utility. And I'm going to drag the folder in here click this new file button and we're just going to make an index.html file. That's all I'm going to make. I'm not going to make a separate style sheet for this. Just going to have all of our CSS, our utility classes, and HTML are going to be in one file here, okay? I'm going to hit shift exclamation and tab to get my uh, HTML boilerplate code. And then we're going to go up here and we'll name our document CSS utility or utilities maybe going to go up into my type below my title within the head of my HTML and I'm going to go ahead and make a style tag and all of our CSS and our utility class is just going to go here okay so let's go ahead and before we go any further I want to launch this document so that we can see it update live over here whoops I'm going to go ahead and click live and this is using the live server extension for Visual Studio Code so and you can download that if you don't have it by clicking on this thing and just typing in live and it'll be the It'll be the first thing that pops up. It'll say live server. It's right there, and then you just click install. Okay. So let me get my 
page opened up in my other screen here. There it is. So we have our CSS uh, utilities blank web page that we just created right here with this code, and we're going to update that in real time. All right, so let's start. So I want to pretend here that we're building like a little blog section of a, of a page, and it'll have a heading and a paragraph and a button uh, that'll probably say like read more. So, you know, like a normal blog page. So I'm going to go here and I'll write, let's make like an H1. We'll say, welcome to the blog. Okay. And then below the H1, we'll have an article and we'll have an H2 and we'll just call it, uh, we'll just have placeholder text. We'll say medium heading. And then below the H2, we'll have some paragraph text. This will be like the preview of a like blog post. Now there's preview text and there's usually like a read more button. So, well, I'm gonna say P for paragraph. I'm gonna hit tab. So it'll, it'll make that for me automatically in Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna put some placeholder text. I'm gonna type lorem. And then I'm gonna tape 50 because I want 50 placeholder text words on warm ipsum. Go. And then let's make our button that says read more. And this will like theoretically take us to the whole rest of the blog post on the full page. Okay. And if you don't know what like anything that I'm doing here or what lorem ipsum placeholder text, or if you're like super confused right now, I have a free HTML course and then a free CSS course that you can take. I'll link that down in the description. Um, they're both like 16 or 17 different uh, parts each. It's a full course, guys. It's several hours of free stuff. So... If this is confusing you, I suggest you start with the basics and go learn um, all of this first, okay? So anyway, we got our first article. Let's copy this down a couple times. Um, we'll have like four, okay? So this is our like little blog post thing. And now just like that design that I just showed you, I'm gonna style, I'm gonna add one utility class styling for the heading, the paragraph, and each button. So that all I have to do is add classes to them and they all get styled the same way, okay? So I'm gonna go up into my style tags here. And the first one that we'll do was for the headings and I'm gonna call this class, we'll say dot heading text, txt. And let's say that I want that to be um, like a dark kind of blue color. So we'll say hashtag 365, uh, 36B, use that hex. All right, guys, so now that we got our heading TXT class, now I can just edit to all the headings that I want to have that bluish color, which is going to be all of them in this case. So I'll just say class, and then there it is. It'll auto-populate for me if you're using Visual Studio Code. Heading TXT, cool. That just changed it that blue color that I wanted. So let's just copy the class now. I'm just going to hit uh, Command-C or Control-C if you're on PC. And I'm going to add that here. And there's blue, and you'll see here, they're all gonna change that blue color every time we add the class, okay? So you might be saying to yourself like, yeah, that's cool, but why wouldn't, why don't you just use like a H2 and H1 selector for, to change all those blue? So why, so instead of this, um, why wouldn't you just do this? H1, all H1s and all H2s, and then just copy that color. You know, like, why wouldn't you do something like that? Because it does the same thing. And the reason you wouldn't want to, that's not really best practice if you're making, like, a big multi-page website or a bigger website. If you're just making, like, one little landing page, that's fine. But if you're making a bigger website, using these explicit, they're called, like, explicit uh, selectors, using the element, you're, you're selecting every element on the page that's an H1 and an H2. And that can get messy if you have a style sheet that's connected to like five web pages that are all part of the same website because you might have other pages that don't have that color on them at all and now you just made all h1s and h2 that color and that's no good so you should only use the actual element selector tag when you are absolutely positive that you can get away with it without messing up styles on a separate page okay so yes you can do that but if you're making a bigger project uh, not recommended. It's always better just to use classes because you can put a class on any element that you want without affecting the whole page, right? So that's why uh, utility classes are super useful. So I'm just going to delete that and then they're all going to remain the same because they all have the heading TXT class on them. 
And then let's go in, let's make one for the paragraph. So I'm gonna say dot P T X T. And then uh, we'll make this like another kind of off bluish color to kind of go with the headings, I guess. So let's just say color and we'll use a hex code. We'll say hashtag 6C8294. And that'll be for our paragraph text. So let's go to our paragraphs and add the class P TXT. And there it is. So let's do that same thing again. Let's just copy this down to all of our paragraphs. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So there you go. Now they're all kind of that off blue color. Now let's style our buttons. And I'm going to make my buttons look like the buttons in that design example I showed you. They're like, uh, they're pink and they're, they're kind of rounded, but they, they look good. So um, I'm looking at the, the styles for that button on another screen and I'll just copy them along with me. Okay. So I'm going to make this class, my call to action class. That's going to go on all my buttons. So I'm going to say dot CTA that's short for call to action. And this is something really common that you'll see in development. People call buttons CTAs or they'll have a, a CTA class on buttons and we'll go background color and then make it that pinkish color. See, it's going to be B a four, two, seven zero and then the color of the text of the button is going to be like an off white and it's going to be hashtag f b f c f e and then the width of our button is going to be 178 pixels long and the height will be 48 pixels tall okay uh, we'll give it a little border radius, and that's the rounding. That's the round. That's what makes the, the edges round. And we'll give that like an 8-pixel border radius. I'm going to say border none. Okay. And then we'll put cursor to pointer, so it'll have the cursor point. It'll have that little pointer when we hover over the button. So like um, this will turn to that little hand when I hover over it. And then I'm going to change most buttons on web pages, guys. When you hover over them, they'll change the color of the button or they'll do a little animation. So we'll, we'll do that here just to make this more realistic. So to do that, we do transition. And then I'm going to change the opacity of the button. So how light or dark the color is. I'm going to have it change in 0.2 seconds. And we're going to use the ease in property. And then I'm just going to go copy this CTA. And then use the hover pseudo selector. So it's called a pseudo selector. And we're just going to change the opacity to 0.9. So I want it that 0.9. What that means is make the button a little lighter when I hover over it. And that's going to work because we use the opacity and the transition up here. You got to match them up, which, which you're going to change. Okay. So let's go ahead now and add our CTA class to the buttons and see if that makes them look better. So let's say class. CTA. Let's watch the first button here when we save. Oh, that looks way better. Let's see if it hovers. Yep. See that little hover effect with the opacity? And now we have this class for all the rest of the buttons. So if I was really building that web design out right now, all I would have to do every time I got to my button area is make a button, put the text in, and then just give it that CTA class. And there's a lot of buttons on that website, man. That was like one page had like four or five. So you can see how handy these utility classes can come in. Okay, and now we got all our buttons whenever we want them. We just had a CTA, a little utility class. And if I was making a real web page, I would have all these little utility classes up above, and I would have like a comment above them. So I'd make like a CSS comment, and that would just be like utility classes. So that was like explicit, like, hey, these are for. So if any other developer, if I revisit the web page or the code like three years down the road, I'll be like, oh, here's all my utility classes. Oh, this is what they do. I get it. You know what I mean? So, and that's, guys, uh, that's utility classes. That's why they're so important. Um, that's why they're so useful. So if you're about to start a new project, you might want to look at the design you're making or whatever and just say, like, hey, is there any, like, styling utility classes that I want to add right now that would, uh, you know, appear on the page multiple times so I don't have to repeat my code, right? 
So uh, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.